In the 90s, when I grew up, a lot of gangster rappers were not really the killers that we know about today. In fact, there was a term for rappers who talked about violence but didn't really live it. It was called studio gangsters, okay? That's what people used to say. You're like an actor. You talk about these things, but you don't really live it. And of course, there were rappers who were affiliated, like Snoop Dogg, who in fact beat a murder case from Rolling 20s Crips in Long Beach. You had DJ Quick, who definitely wasn't no punk from Treetop Pyro in Compton. You had Suge Knight, who wasn't a rapper, but he was a CEO from Mob Hood. So you had guys who were affiliated, even like Easy E. I believe he's from Nutty Block, but these guys were not like killing machines like we see with some of the guys in today's game. They can make a lot of money just talking about killing and doing drugs, but never living that life. But this is different than the Chicago drill rappers or drill rappers, period. A part of their persona in becoming big in drill is they actually have to live the lifestyle that they're talking about. If they don't, they really can't be a drill rapper for real. So they have to execute these things that they're talking about and basically crash out on their albums. This is true with rappers like King Von, Little Jeff, and now Little Dirt. But speaking of Little Jeff, this is the guy who just died like four months ago. He literally got killed trying to kill somebody on tape, basically so he can go back and rap about it on his song. Unfortunately for him, he got shot 19 times and died. But he even talked about it in this particular clip. He was in a cop, patting your hair like this. <laughs> you man, I'm finna start taking to killer school. <laughs> I'm finna start taking to killer school. You gotta have at least two bodies. Hey, now I heard King Von say in one of his songs, you not a killer unless you got two bodies. Exactly, now you get it. Damn, so that's real? Shit, real. So if a if nigga caught a body on some self-defense shit, that's, he's shit, not a killer. No, yeah, hell nah, no. Nah, no, you, ain't you had that. to protect yourself. Yeah, you was scared you, you, for your you life. So if you didn't shoot that gun, your was gonna die. I love be so I scared to not die that they, they gonna gun. shoot out of field. Again, this is a dude that allegedly had 11 bodies and basically was a killing machine in Chicago. Again, this, this is a big part of his rap music, which is actually putting in work. Now, Charleston White, who was basically an enemy to Chicago drill rap and that whole scene, recently made fun of the Little Dirk arrest. Somebody laughing at Dirk like they were laughing at me when I went to jail. <laughs> I know what I'm <laughs> So ain't nobody laughing at Dirk. Now it ain't funny. Now your favorite rapper go to jail and look like he got a no bond like me. <laughs> but that boy got a federal no bond. Ooh, I bet that old and closed up. He got a burp to pass that. <laughs> he can't even fart out his ass. I know, I know the feeling. Boy, they get your ass, they put a hole on you. Boy, who to be tight in the motherfucker sitting on that bench. <laughs> hey, hey, man. Now, all y'all who said my time coming for saying King Von, saying King Von, all oh, his time coming, they go get him. Drake time came for saying Tuka, or is this his common? I, I don't know. Y'all be so hypocritical when it comes to your favorite rappers. I don't even know. <laughs> That's all I'm saying, boys and girls. Say, let's make fun of Dirk like y'all made fun of me. Better when y'all thought I got slapped. Look like that boy. <laughs> Salute the little Tim. Um, the demons stay up. I bet he going to PC. Them California niggas gonna try to extort it. One thing we know about California, the Crips and Bloods rule. GD, BD, on four them, they ain't got no say so nowhere. <laughs> but when they write a letter to somebody. But in the California prison system, Cuz and Blood run everything. And Pyru, that GDBD, uh, phone them. Mm -mm, it's gonna be hard on his. Ass. They're gonna be trying to extort him because they know he got money. He might have to pay for a little protection. You know what? He might be all right because he joined Asalamu Alaikum. One thing about it, Asalamu Alaikum, they look out for each other. <laughs> and remember, allegedly. Just last week, Charleston White was shot in Chicago, but that was a hoax that wasn't really true. 
And now people are thinking about the future of Little Dirt. I can remember the things that Jay-Z talked about with his friend, um, basically about his life in the streets. As you know, that Jay-Z used to be a drug dealer and he was able to transition. And Jay-Z talks about it quite candidly. You turn him the downfall of whatever yeah. good. Yeah, the that, evil yeah, side. Yeah, the bad talk, side of it. Yeah, it's heaven and then there's hell. One day you cruising in the seven, the next day you, your alibis ain't matching up. Boy, catching up. You hit with the Rico, they repo that vehicle. She was all good just a week ago. About to start snitching, ain't you? Ready to start, ain't you? I forgive you. I forgive you. Hustling just ain't you. And again, Jay Z, it just seemed like these lyrics are just as true today as they were just almost 30 years ago. Those lyrics came from Jay Z's Dead President song in 1996. And again, it predicts almost for sure what happened to Little Dirt, like to a T. And it's sad. And Brother Tariq Nasheed spoke on the situation in this capacity. It's real out here and all my guys out here, if you're trying to be in the music industry, be in the music industry. Stop trying to have a foot in the game and, and be in the music industry. Listen, man, y'all better understand all of your moves are being monitored. Y'all can't be out here doing the same stuff you were doing when you were low key, when you are high profile. When you're out here in the public eye, everything you do is monitored, man. They have the hip-hop police still. Any high-profile black person is being monitored. The feds are on you. They're watching everything you do. There are feds in this room right now. You understand? They monitor you. They watch everything you do. They got feds around you. Some of your bodyguards, some of them might be on the take. Some of your assistants, some of them might be on the take, man. We look, we've had some little undercover feds around us when we're doing our events and we thinking that we got activists who are down and low key, they're undercover feds working with a bunch of other feds and ops. It's real. That's a part of the game, man. So you just got to be on the straight and narrow and just be on the up and up because if you're doing good business and you're doing the right thing, the, the feds will be somewhat ineffective. Let me just tell you guys um, a word of advice. For those of you brothers out there that will be on your way up, you have money, I mean, you have opportunity. I don't know why you feel like you can move the same ways or in the same fashion that you used to, but Tariq Nasheed is completely right. Once you get some money and you're high profile, there are so many people looking at you that you don't have a chance, man. Um, so if you have some get back on somebody you wanna do, and all of that, you gonna have to let that go. Because one thing for sure is this, you can't beat the feds. Back when you was broke and you dust and you had a, a few little murders or crimes back in your hood, when didn't nobody care about who died, that's different. But when you little jerk, you got millions of dollars and somebody end up dead at the Beverly Center in Beverly Hills where rich people are at, you know, no, that's somebody gotta pay for that, okay? So you can't have your foot in the streets and still be doing this. You have to make a decision. And if you think that you have more resources than the feds, no, one of your boys is gonna flip. And allegedly, this dude or people in his crew have been getting wiretapped for years. So much so that Lil Dirk, he knew the FBI and the feds was on him. He was trying to trick the feds by trying to order multiple tickets out of the country. But you can't trick the feds, bro, when you're a Lil Dirk. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna hide out at? Come on, fam, be serious. You're not about to go nowhere. You're known. And I just want everybody to know, you can't beat these people, man. You gotta be on the up and up. So if you can't make that transition, I understand. But Little Dirk, again, a guy like him, he made his lifestyle by basically rapping about the things that he does. So he's trying to stay true to form. But staying true to form is gonna get his ass locked up for the rest of his goddamn life. Cause you're not gonna be no drill rapper and still be out here involved in drilling and still think you're gonna be out here to come back and talk about it on your albums. Without the feds using all of that as evidence, which is what they gonna do. And if you think you're gonna get your ass up there and say, oh yeah, well no, this is an art form. You guys are crazy, man. You're, they, these people are not dumb. So guys, what do you think it's your boy O'Shea Dude Jackson? Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell, we're out.